And so 14 and 15 are both the quadratic formula. Hopefully you know it. It's x equals negative b plus or minus square root and b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And, you know, I know there's a handful of y'all that can't pick out a yet, but a is the understood one. In this case, the understood one in front of x squared. b is negative 6 and c is negative 5. And then we just throw stuff in. Opposite of a negative 6 is a positive 6. So x is 6 plus or minus the square root of parentheses because you're probably a button pusher. Negative 6 all squared. <coughs> minus 4 times a, which is 1, times c. That oh, does not look like 1 at all. And there we go. 1 times c, which is negative 5. All sitting pretty over twice a. And you know, <clears throat> in a perfect world, you'd be able to do this kind of math by hand. Boy, a lot of y'all struggle. There we go. There's a wabbit emu. I mean, it's 36 plus 20. It's 56. But, you know, you probably need to see me push buttons to believe it. So we have parentheses, negative 6, quantity squared, minus 4 times 1 times negative 5. And there we go, <coughs> root 56. So x is 6 plus or minus the root of 56. Both pieces over 2 because 2 times 1 is 2. And root 56, I believe, is going to be a root of 4 times a root of 14. And the root of 4 is a 2. So let's think about that. That's sitting over a 2. 2 is canceled. So 6 over 2 is 3. And then we have plus or minus a root of 14. And you always simplify the radical. <laughs> Uh, the only difference between 14 and 15, besides the numbers got a little bigger, is we have to be set equal to 0. So 2x squared minus 8x minus 5 is now equal to 0. Then you pick out your a's, your b's, and your c's. For those of you that struggle with a, b, and c, try writing them down a couple times. a is 2 b is negative 8, and c is negative 5. And then just plug into your formula, which you ought to know by now. Opposite of a negative 8 is going to be a positive 8, plus or minus square root of a negative 8 squared minus 4 times a, which is 2, times c, which is negative 5, all sitting pretty over twice a 2. And then twice a 2 is a 4. We have 8 plus or minus square root. This is going to be 64, and negative times negative is positive, plus 40, because 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 5 is 40, which is 104. And that's also over a 4. 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, I know that 104 is going to be 4 times, uh, I wrote that wrong, sorry. It's going to be a root of 4 times a root of 26. And the root of 4 is 2. So we know 4 is 2. This is going to reduce down to 2 root 26. x over 4. And then we have the half, because 2 over 4 is a half. So 2 plus or minus a root of 26 over 2. Ta-da! Right, there's 15. Just chugging on our way through this one. There's a factoring section. There's not much in it. Hopefully, it's not too bad for you. Now, on 16, some of you need to look at this as 4x squared plus no x minus 25. And the first thing we create when we factor these trinomials is we create the leading piece. And this one happens to be a very special pattern in Algebra 2. But to create a 4x squared, it takes a 2x and a 2x. And to create a 25, it takes a 5 and a 5. 
Now to add to nothing, one of these fives has to be negative because five, take away five, is nothing. And she's factored. We're not solving. There's no equality symbol. Factor 15x squared plus 14x minus 8. Do not solve. There's lots of ways to create the 15. You could use a 15 and a 1. Or you could use a 3 and a 5. I'm going to go with the 3 and the 5. So I've created the first piece. Now I'm going to try to create the second piece. It's probably something along the lines of 4 and 2. Now the outside is going to make 20 x the inside is going to make 6x and by gosh 20 minus 6 is 14. I need a positive 20 and a negative 6. Now the difference between me doing this and y'all do it is you know I know how to add and subtract pretty quick I know my multiplication tables you're working on deficit skills and I wish you'd go back in time and fix that. A line passed through the points negative 1, 4, and 2, 8. What is its equation y equals mx plus b4? Remember, anything is fair game in this class, even something from algebra 1. It doesn't matter. Uh, the point slope formula is actually used quite heavily, believe it or not. Even in calculus, there's variants of it that we use. But we're going to need two formulas. We're going to need the formula for slope which is so simple, even, you know, a seventh grader can do it, which is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And then we need something called point-slope form. Which is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So those are two things I need. So I'll find my slope. I would do 8 take away 4, sitting pretty over 2 take away a negative 1, and 8 take away 4 is 3, or sorry, 8 take away 4 is 4, and 2 take away a negative 1 is 3. And then I need a point, because this is literally called point slope. I have slope, I need a point. I'm just going to use the first one for no reason. Remember, points give you x's and y's. In this case, they give you x1 and y1. Which means using point slope form. So we'll have y take away that 4 equal to the slope that we found, which was 4 thirds times x take away the negative 1. So taking away a negative was addition. We'll distribute our 4 thirds, 4 thirds x plus 4 thirds, and y minus 4 is equal to that quantity. And then we're going to add 4 to both sides. I know most of y'all will push buttons because that's what you do, but 4 is 16 over, sorry, we're doing thirds here. 4 is 12 thirds. Focus on that 3. And 12 thirds plus 4 thirds is 16 thirds. So, you know, if you got to push buttons, I guess push buttons. All right, moving forward. 19, solve the inequality using the graphing ability of your TI-84. Now, let's look at the context of this question. And so uh, we should know that an x squared is a parabola and that 3x plus 2 is a line. It, actually, we shouldn't. We do know. Like, we don't know that. How did you get to algebra 2? There's a less than symbol. It's saying, where is the parabola beneath the line? That's what it's saying. Where is this happening? So we'll go to our trusty TI-84, our best friend in mathematics. And we'll put the left-hand side into Y1. And we'll put the right-hand side into Y2. And we'll do a zoom six. I'm going to zoom in just to make the picture a little obvious. It's probably not something I've done with y'all. Y'all 
you'll notice I'm all about pictures. Pictures and drawings and stuff like that. A picture is worth a thousand words. Always. Oh, man. Bummer. Let me look up just a little bit. A little bit more. I'm just kind of guessing, Jack. And that's all really learning is. I was guessing a number. I just want a really good picture for y'all. Do my best to explain what's going on. All right, cool. I see the intersections. And remember the context of the question. Where is the parabola beneath the line? Where? Where is that happening? I'll enlarge this for you so you can see it better because you might be looking at it on a phone. But the parabola is beneath the line anywhere along this path right here. That's the path, okay? What I want to know is I want to know these x values that create this path. That, that's the real thing. When I say where, it's actually what x values make this true. So I have a TID4 in front of me, and I have knowledge of the intersect feature. So second trace, and we've been here time after time after time, five. There isn't much you can't do in Algebra 2 by using the intersect feature. You just need to learn it. So we got negative 0.25. All right, so there's my left tail. I'm not too worried about the y values. That's x equals negative 0.25, which is x equals negative 1 over 4. For those of you that are challenged. And then we got another intersection up here, second trace. Five. And you take your little cursor and you get your little cursor close to the intersection and you press enter once, twice, thrice is nice. And you got a nice number there. X is one. Now, as long as I'm anything between those two numbers, as long as I'm between these things, this parabola is beneath the line. So the left number is negative one fourth. And again, X is stuck in between them. It looks like that, using inequalities. This is how you answer. If you like the interval notation, which I love, the small number is negative one quarter, and the large number is one. Ta-da! This isn't hard. It's not hard. Just, I wish I could make it make sense for you. But I can't. That's, that's up to you. You're the one who's going to have to make this stuff make sense. Let me just reset the page. That's quicker. What is the equation of a parabola in factored form with x-intercepts of negative 7, 0, and 3, 0? So we've talked about this. We've talked and talked and talked about this. Uh, when you're right you're talking about any form, there is always an A. And this guy right here literally says x is negative 7 because that's what x is. And when you enter your factors, your signs change. This one again says x is 3. When you enter your factors, your signs change. So if you don't see something that's got those signs change, it's obviously wrong. It's a multiple choice. Uh, every point in existence, every order pair gives you an x and a y, at least in America it does. And we're going to plug those numbers in. Everywhere I see a y, I'm a 3. Everywhere I see an x, I'm a negative 1. And that's going to give me, put me in a position to figure out what a is. So x is negative 1. And again, x is negative 1. Then I do some math. 
negative 1 plus 7 is 6, negative 1 minus 3 is negative 4. Turns out there is a negative 24 that's attached to this A. And then I divide it out. You know, if I've got to be a button pusher or whatever, this is going to reduce down to negative 1 eighth. And I know some of y'all, and I'm, I'm probably wasting most of y'all's times because the kids who can't do this are not going to watch the video. I mean, if we're completely honest. I, I don't know why I'm wasting time on it. I get negative 0.125, math, enter, enter. And the same kid will say, well, it's your fault, no breath. No, no, it ain't. It's you. It's not me. A is negative one eighth. And that's going to go there. So here's my full equation. Let's, let's, I don't know why I'm in the habit of using y equals lately. Let's call it f of x. It's something. That's probably what I called on the test. f of x is negative one eighth of x plus seven times x minus three. And there's 20. I don't remember how many is on this quiz or on this practice sheet. I think there's 23 things. Yeah, something's missing. We've got to put one more thing on here. Because I forgot to put it on your main twin. So for f of x is 3 times x minus 3 quantity squared plus 7, find all of the following. Uh, number one is the y-intercept. To find a y-intercept, we let x be 0. Because if you're on the y-axis, this is 0 and some constant for y. So x is 0. So our y-intercept, f of 0, whatever you want to say, call it y subscript i, is 3 times 0 minus 3 quantity squared plus 7. If you take a negative 3 and you square it, you get a 9. So 3 times a 9 plus a 7 is going to be 27 plus 7, which should be 34. So the y-intercept is 0, 34. These are ordered pairs. X-intercept. We let y equal 0 because if you're on the x-axis, you have some x value and you have 0 for y. That's, that's also one of the reasons why when you were doing your mother function quizzes, I was making you plot those points, remember? Like, that's why I did it. Trying to get you to understand that basic concept. Connect some dots, kids. All right, so we're going to find our x-intercept. We're going to let this guy right here, because it's fancy for y, be 0. We're going to set the output to 0. That's what we do. And this ain't going to be pretty. It wasn't meant to be. We're going to subtract 7. Negative 7 is 3 times x minus 3 quantity squared. Oh, this thing is ugly. <laughs> this thing is hideous. The good thing is, is it doesn't have one. Because we're going to divide by 3. And we have negative 7 thirds is x minus 3 quantity squared. And now we're going to counteract squaring by square rooting. And this is where I can stop. That's imaginary. There are no x-intercepts. It doesn't exist. And that makes sense if you think about the graph. This thing was right 3 and up 7, wasn't it? And then it opened up. Factor 3. There isn't one. The vertex comes from this. What I was doing is I was analyzing the a times x minus h quantity squared plus k form. Your vertex is at 3. Change sign. Keep sign. 7. The equation for the axis of symmetry is the imaginary line that passes smack dab through the middle. And it has to be written x equals. It has to be written x equals. If it is not written x equals, you don't get credit. It has to be written x equals. Has to be.
22, 4, f of x is 3x squared plus x minus 10. Find all the following again. So first off is the y-intercept. Again, the y-intercept happens when x is 0. So the y-intercept is 3 times a 0, quantity squared plus a 0, minus a 10, and you get negative 10. If something is in standard form, which that one is, it's always the number at the end. And again, our ordered pairs here, x was 0 and the y value is negative 10. Find the x-intercept. Find an x-intercept. We let y equal 0. So 0 equals this equation. Uh, you could do the QF if you wanted to. If you can't factor, you can always use the QF. You can. You can, but this one factors. You're probably listening to me while it's muted. If you can't do the, if you can't factor, you can do the quadratic formula. Some kids get pretty good at it. But it takes a 3x and an x. And for a 10, probably a 5 and a 2. Yeah, it's 5 and 2. Because the outside is going to make 6x. And the inside is going to make 5x. And 6x minus 5x is x. Now, we're still equal to a zero. The zero didn't go anywhere. So you'd use that ZPP. Zero is 3x minus 5, or zero is x plus 2. Add 5, divide by 3, we get 5 thirds. Take away 2, and we get x. So here are your ordered pairs are going to be 5 thirds zero and negative 2 zero. All right, next up is going to be your vertex. Your vertex, the x coordinate of the vertex is opposite b over 2a. If you haven't let that click over the last couple of days, you haven't been paying attention. b happens to be 1. Opposite of that is a negative 1. a happens to be 3, so twice a 3. If you're a button pusher on that, so be it. Make sure you push buttons right. And what I mean by that is, and this is really sad, but this is what happens. Do not be this kid. Do not be this kid. You fail. You don't have a choice in failing. You're going to fail. Go to math. Go to how you feel. Hit the up arrow. Press enter. And, you know... I'm going to pray for you anyways. Because, you know, what do they say? Bless you. Ta-da! <laughs> Make sure you know how to use calculator. All right, so if you have X to get Y, you're going to plug that thing back in. The Y coordinate vertex, we're going to plug a one, negative one six in. And then I'm sure you'll probably push some buttons, but whatever. 3 times negative 1. You can use the fraction key there if you want to, but you don't have to. 2 to the second. And that's plus a negative 1, 6, so just minus 1, 6. And then minus 10. Math. Enter, enter. Maybe it was negative 3. Well, maybe 121 over 12. So our ordered pair was pretty ugly, negative 1, 6, and negative 121 over 12. And now your equation for axis of symmetry is literally this guy. It's that guy right there. Because this was the vertex. The vertex was back sum and down sum, right? And then it opened up. The equation for the axis of symmetry is the x-coordinate of the vertex because it would pass right through that x value. So it's x equals negative 1, 6. Now, there's one more on this. I just have to pull it up. There's actually most likely a word problem, too, about matrices. But this is the one I need.
It says solve the system using double REF. And you give your answer as an order triple. And there'll probably be a word problem too. Uh, do remember how to think about these things as matrices. Remember we have what's called an augmented matrix. Okay, first column is your X's. Second column is your Y's. That one's negative. Third column is your Z's. And the last column is your constants. This may make sign mistakes. And remember how you put that in the calculator. You did second matrix. Or second inverse, actually. Scroll on over to edit. And think about rows and columns. That thing has... Interesting. That thing has three rows and four columns. So she's going to be a three by four. Now we're just going to push buttons and get everything in there. But the only way you can mess these up is to have typos. Y'all's matrix test I gave at the beginning of the six weeks, it didn't go quite as well as I'd hoped it would. But you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make a drink. So negative one, I'm just double checking. I don't see anything wrong with it. We quit. Second matrix math. We're looking for a function called double R E double R E F. It's two below come sum. And its input is matrix A because that's where I put it. And there we go. These are our solutions. We just have to interpret it. Now, remember, the deal was, is this talks about X, this column talks about Y, and that column talks about Z. So X is negative 1, Y is negative 1, and Z is negative 2. We want our answers as what's called an ordered triple. And it's just going to be X, Y, Z, obviously. So negative 1, negative 1, negative 2. All right, so there we go, and that's not on the piece of paper I gave you, but it is something that had to be done because it is on your quiz or on your test Friday, and the test is Friday, so, you know, get prepared for it. Do what it takes. Get prepped. Grab a couple of these things.